There are plenty of products in our fish keeping hobby that get a lot of attention, like filters, heaters, and lighting. However, there are plenty of items out there that make your lives much easier as fish keepers. Some of these can even be a lifesaver in the case of an emergency. So let's talk about some of the top unsung heroes that are in our aquarium hobby. The five gallon bucket has to be one of the most versatile items that you could have in your fish room. It's also great for cleaning things, especially for rinsing substrate, filtration, and many of the other things that we actually need to clean from time to time. I've also used the five gallon bucket to culture rotifers, but you can also use it for many other types of foods as well. Due to its size, it's definitely a great fish holding vessel as well for fish for quarantine, emergency situations, and even to treat fish for prophylactic means. The bucket also has many uses in the DIY world. There's many people out there who have built DIY filters using the five gallon bucket. The five gallon bucket is definitely one of the best banks for your buck in the fish keeping hobby. Since we are dealing with large amounts of water in glass boxes, it is inevitable that some of this water will end up where we don't want it. Cleaning this water up is imperative to avoid mold and other damage to our homes. Due to its ability to suck up liquids quickly and capacity to hold those liquids, the shop vac is truly a lifesaver when it's needed. Another thing I really do like to use shop vacs for is cleaning up duckweed. I just stick the top of the shop vac hose at the top of the tank, trying to suck up as much duckweed and as little water as possible. I'm also on the lookout for any fish that might be curious about the water movement at the top, thinking that it's food. I really do find this to be a quick, easy, and efficient way to clean duckweed out of my aquariums. It's also extremely useful to use a shop vac to suck up the remaining bits of sand and gravel after you drain a tank and are cleaning it out. In all of these cases, just make sure that your shop vac is only for your fish in your fish room and not for other items in your home. These smart plugs have been a great addition to my fish room as well. You can pick these up cheaply from the aquarium co-op and the possibilities are endless. I currently use them to run all of the lights in my fish room to ensure that I have a consistent lighting schedule. It's also convenient if I do wanna keep the lights on a little bit longer in case I'm working later into the evening. I also use these for auto water change as well. I just have them turn on for a specific time period at specific times during the day, which obviously makes my life a lot easier when it comes to maintenance in the fish room. I do have a video about how I did set up the smart plugs for lighting, uh, which I'll go ahead and put up here in the card. Alongside the smart plugs, you could also set up cameras in order to take video of your fish room so you can check on it while you're away. I personally haven't done this yet, but this is definitely something you can explore. While I currently don't use them on a regular basis in my fish room, the USB air pump from the aquarium co-op can be a lifesaver in case of emergencies. In the case of a power outage, you can run them off a battery backup unit and still get oxygen into your fish tanks. These also do incredibly well for transporting fish. You can just plug them into your car's USB outlet and they can provide a steady source of oxygen for your fish on their journey. I used these when I drove two fish from Detroit to New Jersey, which is an 11 hour drive back in 2019 to the Aquatic Experience when I showed fish at the American Cichlid Association show at the Aquatic Experience. Temperature is an important factor in taking care of your fish. It's essential to be able to measure this temperature to ensure your fish tanks are in proper working order. A temperature outside of the normal range can weaken your fish and make them more susceptible to diseases like ick. I like to use an infrared thermometer like this to check the temperature of numerous tanks and even the bags of new fish coming in but in a pinch, any thermometer will do. Specimen containers also have great uses in your fish room. They do a great job of holding fish that you're waiting to bag for an auction or sale. It also makes it easier when you're moving fish from tank to tank, because you can net all the fish at once, put them in the container, and then transport them to the tank they're going to without having to do it one at a time. Definitely a time saver. You can also use them to safely strip mouth brooding African cichlids in order to either capture the eggs or the small fry. The Python water changer and siphon hoses are also great time savers in your fish room. The Python and similar type models attach to your sink, making it possible to both remove water, vacuum your tank, and then with the switch of a lever, refill the same tank with, with fresh water. 
This is both a time saver and a back saver compared to lugging heavy five gallon buckets. Siphon hoses are great for quickly vacuuming tanks and removing detritus to ensure the health of your tanks and fish. Gel style super glue is an incredible asset for your fish room. It does a great job of sticking plants like Anubias, Java fern, and various mosses to items like rocks and wood. These rhizome plants cannot be planted in the substrate as it would kill the rhizome and thus kill the plant. In the saltwater world, this type of super glue is also very good at attaching corals to rocks, much like you would the Anubias or Java fern. Having super glue around the fish room is also great for repair type projects such as fixing cracks in aquaclear filters and many of the other plastic items that may break in your fish room. As long as you use the gel style super glue, it's incredibly fish safe and will not harm any of the fish in your fish room. Whether it's shooting videos, taking pictures of your fish tank, or just wanting a clean tank for your friends and neighbors, there are quite a few items that are handy to have around to clean up your fish tanks. Magnet cleaners are great for cleaning algae and other dirt off of the inside of your fish tanks. For that stubborn green spot algae, razor blades or the blade attachment for the mag floats work extremely well. For that hair algae on your rock work, the toothbrushes that you get from the dentist is an exceptionally great tool. There's also another product which is like an underwater toothbrush called the Sonic Scrubber, which I also like to use. If you're interested, you can find that on Amazon. For the outside glass of your tank, I really like to use the Fritz Glass and Acrylic Cleaner. It's safe for your fish and does a great job cleaning up your glass. This is another product that you can pick up at the Aquarium Co-op. Having a separate refrigerator and freezer unit in your fish room allows you to store that frozen food outside of your family's refrigerator. Definitely something to keep your household happy. You can also store larger quantities of dry feeds as well by keeping them fresh in the refrigerator. It is also possible to slow down the metabolism of live feeds such as brine shrimp and rotifers by putting them in the refrigerator. Humidity is another danger that can plague our fish rooms, causing mold to grow in our homes, which is a health hazard. We can use a dehumidifier to remove the humidity from our fish rooms. This also has the added benefit of adding heat to our fish room as well. Having covers on your aquariums of either glass, acrylic, or something like these DIY greenhouse panels will eliminate the evaporation and thus lower the humidity. These covers will also keep heat in your aquarium saving you money on electrical costs for heaters. I definitely hope that you enjoyed taking a look at some of the unsung heroes that reside in our fish rooms. Maybe you found something that you might need for your fish room. Maybe there was something that I missed as well. Definitely leave those in the comments so we all can learn. With that being said, stay safe out there, stay fishy, and I'll catch you on next Sunday's video.